um, right now virtual dyno with my data logs on Hondata and my weight from a junkyard is spitting me out at about 439 I think and then uh, 365 pound feet of torque. What's going on guys? Today's another new day. Welcome back to the channel and thank you again for watching. It's been a while since I posted a video, so here I am, I'm back. I have been basically inactive on all social media, IG, Facebook, and here on YouTube. So uh, I figured I'd update you guys on what's been going on um, because it's some good stuff and I, I haven't forgotten about you guys. I haven't forgotten about what I'm doing. Um, I haven't forgotten about the business and the side stuff that I've been doing and the car. I have actually have been working on the car in the background, but um, I needed to take some time away from everything else so that I could get some things done. A couple of things, um, I just wrapped the bumper the other day and uh, it's, it's, it's a pain, but we'll talk about that in a second. So a few announcements, um, if you guys are following me on Instagram, you know that I've been working on side mirrors. Well, so these are the prototypes right here. It's a little dusty in here because I was cutting. I was cutting that bumper up, but this is the prototype right now. Um, I actually do have the metal plates and the adapters that go with it and they're going to be installed. Here are the metal adapters. These will be offered as a set for the left and right side, for driver and passenger side mirrors. Um, this is a 3D printed piece. Uh, these have threaded inserts and I'll show you guys how they connect maybe in this video or in another video, but I just wanted to update you guys that uh, the ball is rolling when it comes to these side mirrors. I know a lot of you guys have been asking, um, you know, when can I buy these? And it's taking some time. Um, and the reason for that is because I have officially started an LLC. It's called Nineveh Industries. Um, you guys have been seeing my logo on the heel plates that I sell, 9VA. Nineveh, the way I spelled it, spells out 9VA. And if you've watched my video when I went to go see Andy, I was talking about how Nineveh Industries and the meaning behind it. But anyways, it's official. It is now a business. I now own a business, which is great, thank you. Um, and with that, I have started a website and I'm trying to re uh, launch that website soon so that you guys can purchase off of that rather than reaching out to me and I shoot you invoices on PayPal, how I've been doing it for the last, I don't know, however long you guys have been buying stuff off of me. So um, also with that, there are a few new products that I will be releasing um, along with the side mirrors. Um, I want to save that as a surprise. Some of you already know what it is because you have been asking for it. You've been asking me if you can get a hold of some now and uh, I've been holding off on it for a while. We're at the end of the road here and uh, I'll be very happy to announce all of these things when the time comes. So that's what's been taking all of my time and that's why I haven't been really posting here on YouTube uh, some videos. I have been doing some other things like I've been, I actually have a, uh, some footage for uh, POV driving in this car doing some pulls, doing some back roading, spirited driving. And I want to post that up for you guys, but I just haven't gotten time to it yet. I will get to it. And there's more th things that I need to do for the, uh, for the car. You know, once this bumper goes on, uh, I bought a uh, 3 8 inch thick of ABS to replace the quarter inch HDPE splitter on my old bumper. And that's going to be chassis mounted. I actually chassis mounted this time. Um, and I think we're going to be using some brackets. I'm going to make my own brackets. And tap into here you know, same thing on the other side so this will be a chassis mounted splitter it will be functional and uh, I have a few more things I'm gonna do to spice up the engine bay um, and then after that you know I'm just gonna call it uh, a year as far as the summer goes and then in the winter I've already started buying pieces for my fuel line conversion so I can run E85 and then get retuned and hopefully Hopefully by then we will be very, very close, if not at 500 wheel horsepower. Cross your fingers, guys. Um, that was the goal. The very first video that I posted regarding cars on this channel, because you know I do music and I do cars. The very first video that I posted was building a 500 horsepower Acura TL. 
are we there at that point right now we're pr probably at 500 horsepower to the crank pretty close if not more but we'll find out because one of these days i'll be taking the car out to the dyno to get the hard numbers so that i can show you guys where we're at that will probably be the end of it i know i say that but that never happens in anyone's builds in any channel that you watch and any person that you talk to that's into cars it never ends but for me that is where i'll be content because as soon as I go over 500, to an extent, I will have to modify some other things, either engine internals or uh, transmission, gearing. But we're not there yet, <laughs> one step at a time. Okay, so I just wanted to update you guys on that. Um, and with that being said, let's go into the bumper and see what I did. Uh, if you guys are on Instagram and you're following me, I have posted updates of me wrapping or actually test fitting the bumper onto the car and uh, we finished wrapping it there are some imperfections here and there um, and I'm gonna show you in a second because I'm not ashamed of showing the imperfections uh, just know that at some point I will fix them um, later down the road but I, I really just want to get this put on the car and uh, get the new splitter on there too that way uh, everything's done for the season then when winter comes I can maybe fix this up when I want to when I have some time but so everything's finished. Um, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, this is a really hard piece to wrap. I was able to do most of this in one piece, uh, this whole thing here, and surprisingly this area here too, I was able to do in one piece. So there are no seams here, but where the seams come in are where I did inlays for the, uh, I guess the fog light area where there actually is no fog light. So this is two pieces. I did one upper piece up here, and then one lower piece down here using some lifeless tape. And then also this piece is separate. Same with the top piece up here, that's separate. And then mirrored on the other side, I did the same thing that what I did on that side. I'm gonna go in just a little bit more. You got you kind of see the seams now, and I ran out of knifeless tape. This is why I kind of got frustrated. But in my defense, this was my last large piece of wrap that I had available. So this was either it, you know what I mean? Like this was it. Otherwise I'd have to order more wrap. Um, but there's seams here. Uh, there's one that rides along here. This one's barely noticeable. I did a really good job there with the knifeless tape. Um, there's some seams right here in this corner. I'm not happy with this at all, but I mean, it is what it is for, for what it is right now. Um, this seam goes all the way down. You can't really tell this one. This one's all right. I'm okay with this. Same with this side. Um, I had my wrap actually kind of pull on me a little bit, so you can kind of see some, I guess it's called fingering or something like that. I'm not happy about it. Again, this is why I want to fix it. Um, and then you can kind of see a seam right here. Not too noticeable. This one doesn't upset me that much. The one that upsets me the most, I'll be honest with you, this, you guys are gonna cringe at this. You can't see it right now because of the camera, but if you look at it at certain angles in the lighting, if I got close enough, you see this right here? Um, I cut a little too far whenever I was relieving some tension in this area here when I was stretching it out. And uh, what happened was as soon as I hit it with the heat gun, that tear propagated as it normally would and uh, it actually extended out over here so i just decided i'm going to continue on with uh placing and glassing the the wrap and then afterwards i was just going to try and cut a shape that kind of flows with the bumper and that's kind of the shape that i came up with it's it's kind of like a half moon slash arc but it is what it is uh it's it's wrapped uh, but what we're going to do today is we're going to uh, start working on this modified grill because I know a lot of you guys have asked where I got my grill from and uh, how did I do it so I actually followed a DIY guide or DIY how-to on Accurazine and I'll post the link in the description but you guys can also just watch this so what I'm about to do right now we'll get right into it is I'm gonna cut this center piece right here and we're gonna cut it off so I'm gonna cut around here with the Dremel and then I'm also gonna cut on this side with the Dremel too okay the center piece is cut off. There it is, down on the ground. Make sure when you guys cut this, um, I use the Dremel with a cutoff disc. Okay. And uh, make sure when you guys cut this to uh, wear a mask, because you definitely don't want to be breathing this in. Um, it's going to get really dusty. Uh, if it's working with fiberglass, of course, if you're doing the OEM bumper, you're just going to be worried about uh, pieces of hot plastic shooting back at you. So just be mindful of that um, you guys should be pros when it comes to cutting stuff for your car already okay so next thing what we're going to do is uh there's multiple ways you can do this if you follow the accurazine diy uh the guy 
that made it. He, what he does is he glues a plastic backing. Um, he plastic welds it to the back of the bumper and then uses Bondo or a uh, body filler to smooth or to even this out and get it smooth and then he sands it down. And then he does the same thing on the other side. In my case, because this is fiberglass, I'm just gonna go ahead and actually fiberglass it again. And that way this is more of like a permanent. Because I'm pretty sure I'm not a bodywork type of person. I have done a few things in the past, but I'm pretty sure that uh, Bondo is not supposed to exceed, I think like eighth of an inch of thickness or something like that. Any more than that, it's gonna it's it's gonna tend to crack. So um, ever since I've heard that and researched that, um, I've tried to avoid going anything thicker. So right now, this is probably sitting about like three eighths of an inch, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch or something like that. Yeah, maybe three sixteenths of an inch. But anyways, it's more than an eighth of an inch, so I don't want to uh, just bond to it with a plastic backing. I'm going to try and just fiberglass it in and then sand it down, and make it flush. And then uh, I'll use body filler to get all the uh, pinholes and everything out of there and to uh, make it nice and even. All right, guys, so the fiberglass is on and we're going to wait for it to cure overnight. And uh, maybe tomorrow we can start cutting away with all the excess and uh, then start sanding down what I have to sand down. And then after that, we'll use uh, we'll use some body filler. But we'll see what happens. I had to lay down some plastic in case I get some dripping. I don't want it to go in the vinyl wrap, so just trying to be careful. Yeah, so we'll be back tomorrow and let's we'll see what happens. Alright guys, so it's day number two and uh, we're back here with the bumper. I actually got to cutting the fiberglass earlier today and I forgot to grab some footage, but here we are right now. Uh, so I kind of got the uh, the basic cuts done and I'm going to fine sand, or I guess I'll fine shape it with some sandpaper and then also try to get as flush as I can. And then I'm going to slap some Bondo on here and get rid of all the uh, unevenness and make sure everything's smooth. And then we'll prime it and then wrap this black. I'm going to go ahead and keep sanding this. I'm going to wet sand this so that I don't get dust everywhere. Um, it's a good practice to do that. So I got it sanded down. Uh, it's pretty good as far as the, matching the contours um, of the grill as it sits. So what I'm going to do now is uh, throw some Bondo on there, try and get these pinholes. Like this right here, and I can see it. These you can kind of see the uh, fiber actually. The fiber pattern is a little raised to where the epoxy is at. So. I'm gonna have to fill that in and then fill in the uh, the edges because you can only you know feather those so much with some finer sandpaper. So we're gonna be able to blend this in with some bondo, some body filler, and then uh, that'll be it. I think maybe one or two coats of the uh, bondo just to make sure I get everything to smooth it out. And after that, we'll hit it with some primer. Um, I don't have, actually have to prime this whole thing because uh, the vinyl wrap will stick to this down here because it's already primed. Uh, I just need to prime and hit it right up here, and I'm not too worried about you know being different colors because this is going to be wrapped anyways. And if I ever decide to later in the future paint it, you know I can always just strip it down and then uh, prime it myself. All right, so. Everything sanded down, nice and smooth. Um, the uh, contours are even. So now what we're gonna do is tape this off and uh, hit it with some primer, probably like two coats, and then uh, I can get the wrapping. So we're almost done. The two coats of primer is on. So now this is ready to be wrapped. And uh, the wrap will adhere to the surface because it's not primed. Um, I'm pretty sure you can't wrap, or you can wrap over Bondo or body filler, but it's not recommended because it won't stick well. Um, this is the old grill off of the 
four bumper to so over there. Um, and this grill, I just got the mesh off of uh, customcargrill.com's, uh, I think it's a honeycomb mesh. And then I 3D printed this grill trex. To mount this in the back, for those of you who are, who are gonna be running this bumper, um, I just decided to use these uh, self-adhesive anchors for zip ties. And I'm just gonna zip tie this mesh. And so, you kinda see what I'm talking about. I'm just kinda stuck it in there. Um, but if you guys are using the OEM bumper, you're gonna have to get creative. I just use some self-tapping screws and some zip ties. But I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this. What I'll be using is this gloss uh, black. This is vivid vinyl. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this. I'll put the camera up. And then I put the trim in and uh, the new grills in also as well so there's really not much left but to put this bumper onto the car and uh, I'm not gonna show you what it looks like on the car yet because I want to make that a reveal so I'm gonna end the video here so thanks for watching um, hope you guys enjoyed the video if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please consider doing so uh, and make sure you hit that notification button. That way you guys know when I post new videos. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys. Peace.